This is one of the most important parts of the application. You must complete the budget headings for each activity separately, which includes special needs costs and exceptional costs by each flow. Please ensure the costs requested are relevant to the activity. For the first question, you must outline all activities, contacts and objectives, and detail how they meet objectives of the project. Next, for each activity, provide details on the type of activities, venues, planned dates, working methods used, countries involved, and the roles of participating organizations. Remember, this information is also to be provided within the timetable of activities, which must be annexed to the application. Please note that for youth exchanges and advanced planning visits, the timetable should detail the program for each day. For youth worker mobilities, the timetable should provide a sample of either a week's activity or a program overview if a several week activity is planned. For volunteering projects, the timetable should provide a sample of a week's activity for volunteers. Please also note that if you have advanced planning visits for your youth exchange or volunteering projects, the timetable of activities will be different from the one of the actual exchange or volunteering project. In addition, you must describe how you decide on this program and how your methods and activity are relevant to your objectives, learning outcomes and expected impact. All activities must demonstrate compliance with the principles and provisions described in the Erasmus Plus Program Guide, Annex 1, Mobility Project for Young People and Youth Workers. This includes the use of a variety of informal and non-formal methods to generate learning. All activities should include space for participants to reflect on their learning. Ideally, you should be using Youth Pass and encourage active participation, creativity and initiative. In the third question, you must outline the methods you will use to ensure regular communication with your partners or other project stakeholders. Good partnership is crucial so you should present a clear set of roles and responsibilities in the active delivery, project management, and administration process. Outline the methods by which you will maintain contact before, during, and after the activity. To complete your list of activities, click the activity ID or use the menu button. Select the activity type from the menu. When in the activity section, choose the activity type from the drop-down menu. In this example, we choose an advanced planning visit and you should give it a title. For each activity, enter the details of each flow by clicking the flow number or using the menu button. Here, you have a list of flows, so you can go in the actual flow and start creating it. You must identify a group name. It could be the name of the country. In this example, we will call this a UK group. United Kingdom will be the country of origin Finland, the country of destination, and Helsinki, the city of venue. Start and end date should reflect only the activity and exclude any travel days. As a best practice, you should allow at least one month from the moment the project starts. So if the grant agreement or funding is not received by the project start date, you still have sufficient time to plan accordingly. Let's choose the 1st of October. Now, you can see that there are some messages underneath. In this situation, the form actually tells us that our start date is actually after the end date, so we must change our end date to the 2nd of October. And you can see now that it is in green and the total duration excluding travel days is automatically calculated. Underneath, you choose your travel days. I will put one travel day for the United Kingdom to Finland and one as the total number of participants. The number of participants must include all youth group leaders. Ensure that the minimum and maximum numbers for each activity types match the requirements. So, in our situation for the APV, we have one participant and four fields to provide the breakdown of our participants. We must identify the number of participants with special needs, zero, the number of participants with fewer opportunities, the number of accompanying persons, if you have them, and group leaders. In this example, we have one participant traveling to the APV, and that would be a group leader. Please bear in mind, the participants with special needs are considered those who will require additional support to aid their participation in the activity, and accompanying persons are defined as someone who accompanies participants with special needs to ensure protection and to provide support and extra assistance. As I mentioned before, 
Group leaders will show up as a specific group of people only for youth exchanges, APVs, and youth worker mobilities. They must be at least 18 years old, and their role is to ensure effective learning for all participants in safeguarding. Moving down, you have travel budgets. For the distance band, which is now in red, you must use the European Commission distance calculator to calculate a one-way distance. The distance band selected calculates travel for funding for a return journey. Distances should not be rounded up and are checked by the national agency. Let's explore how to use the distance calculator. This is the official European Commission's distance calculator for Erasmus Plus projects. You need to input your origin, which is Birmingham. As soon as you start typing, the system automatically creates a list of potential options. Then we put Helsinki. So over here, we can see the distance and it falls in the distance band of 500 to 1,999 kilometers. At the moment, you can see that there is no grant allocated per participant and no total grant calculated. So we choose our distance from a drop-down menu and the grant per participant and the total grant are automatically calculated. Further down, you have the special needs support boxes and the exceptional costs which will show up for each flow. At the bottom, you have these two sections and you must enter the number of participants for them both. This is required for a description of the costs and the amount you are requesting. Then, identify how many participants you want it for. However, you can see that there is an error. I want to request special needs support for one participant, but if I scroll back up in my breakdown, you can see that I did not mention any special needs participants. Keep this in mind when you are requesting these costs. The same you would do with exceptional costs. I will put one participant with the description of accommodation for APV. Also, add a breakdown saying two nights times euros 50. This concludes my first flow. Please note that it is possible to request costs for expensive travel under exceptional costs. Please refer to the program guide for further details and the rules requesting these costs. However, it is important to note that if you are requesting exceptional costs for expensive travel, you should only request this in this section and not under the travel section. If you will have exceptional costs for expensive travel requested, you should not have any claims under the travel section. So, over here, you should change this to zero in case you are requesting exceptional costs for expensive travel. Once the flows have been all completed for your first flow, go back to Activity Details and create a second flow by clicking the Add Flow button. We quickly populate our second flow for the Finnish group. This will be travel from Finland to Finland and Helsinki as the city of venue. The start date is the 1st of October and the end date is the 2nd of October. The application automatically calculates the duration. As for travel days, let's put zero because the person is traveling from Helsinki to Helsinki. Then, you have the budget automatically included for one person. The distance band is zero, so no funds are allocated. My second flow is now finished for the Finnish group. Let's go back to activity details and check if both sections are in green.